første gang. Stephen was here the first time. Uh, og besøgte vores menighed. Visiting our church. Det var tilbage i start 90'erne. In the 90s. Jeg vil skyde på det var 1995, 96. 95. Okay, 93. 93, the first time. Det er mange år siden. A lot of years back. Så vi er stadigvæk venner, så det er godt. We're still friends, so that's ja. good. Så uh, følg jer hjemme og velkommen. So feel home, welcome. Så vi glæder os til at høre, hvad de vil undervise os. We look forward to hear the teaching. Så uh, Steve først. Steve. Really good to be with you. Det er dejligt at være sammen med jer. So, for whom are we new to you? Der er nogen vi er nye for. Hvem? Hvem er vi nye for? A few. Um, so we lived for many years in the far north of Scotland. Så so for flere år tilbage så boede vi i Nordskotland. On the very top coast. Op på kysten. So we were more north than Tisted. Så so vi var endnu mere nord på en Tisted. By maybe 150 kilometers straight. 150 kilometer op ad. And uh, so we were very close to the sea. Så so vi var tæt på havet. And if you go straight north. Så so hvis du går direkte nord på. There is nothing. Så so er der ikke noget. Til the North Pole. Indtil man kommer til Nordpolen. And all over to the very far east side of Russia. <laughs> Og helt over til til Rusland. And uh, so we had some interesting prophecies about going to the north. Så so vi fik nogle interessante profetier omkring at rejse nord på. Uh, so we, we we've done some going north. Så so vi har været en gang med at tage nord på. Um, yeah, we we really appreciate the relationship with Kim and the whole church here. Vi er meget taknemmelige for vores relation med Kim og kirken her. And it's been a really good journey together. Det har været en god rejse sammen. And with other friends from around Denmark. Med også vores andre venner fra rundt yeah. omkring i Danmark. Ja. Yeah. Um, we do a job of building God's people in the prophetic. Så vores arbejde det er at opbygge Guds folk i det profetiske. It's an area which has been growing all around the world. Det er et område som vokser over hele verden. Um, God is doing something extraordinary. And amazing. Og Gud han gør noget stort og fantastisk. You know, if we if we take what's happening in the church with the prophetic and apostolic and the healing and the miracles. Så hvis man tager det der sker i kirken med det apostolske og helbredelser. And the gospel going to the ends of the earth. Evangeliet når ud til verdens ende. We are living in a time which there has never been before. Vi lever i en tid som ikke er set før. Så Something is happening. Så der sker noget. Bit by bit by bit, but really quite quickly. Lidt efter lidt, men meget hurtigt. And we're part of it. Og vi er en del af det. So say with me, hallelujah. Så du kan sige sammen med mig, I'm hallelujah. part of something good. Jeg er en del af noget godt. Yeah. So we're opening our hearts this morning. Så vi åbner vores hjerter denne morgen. So I'll pray and then we will dive in. Så lad os bede, og så lad os dykke ind i det. Yeah. So Father, Fader, give us open hearts to yes. hear and understand. Give us faith to step in. Give us tro til at gå ud. And hearts to love you. Og hjerter til at elske dig. In Jesus name. I Jesu navn. Yeah. Now, uh Kim and the church they've kindly called this uh how to release the glory of God. Og Kim og kirken, de har kaldt det her seminar for hvordan man forløser Guds herlighed. In prophecy praise and prayer gem profeti lovsang og bøn yeah it's kind of an area which is fundamental det er, to what we build det er meget fundamentalt i forhold til det som vi bygger it's fundamental to the prophetic which we will be opening up today det er fundamentalt for det profetiske som vi åbner op for i dag yeah i heard i heard a well known preacher say one time his message was 800 hours long jeg har hørt en uh, kendt prædikant sige uh, noget som i et budskab på 800 timer. Så det var lidt sådan, hvor skulle man starte og slutte? 
This message is not quite that long, but it's a case of stepping in and stepping out. Ja, mit budskab det er ikke lige så langt, men det er også det der med at, at komme ind i det og komme ud af det. Yeah, because it's a lot of the Bible. Fordi det er rigtig meget Bibel. And how it fits together. Og hvordan det passer sammen. And brings us to where we are today. Og det bringer Jesus. os til hvor vi er i dag i Jesus. Yeah. So I'll be I have some slides that in English, my apologies if you don't have much English. Så jeg har en PowerPoint på engelsk og I må undskylde mig hvis I ikke lige But hopefully they will be a little help. Forhåbentlig så har I fået lidt hjælp. So I'm calling this the king of righteousness and his tent. Jeg kalder det her for kongen af retfærdighed og hans telt. The flow of prophecy, praise and prayer in the new covenant church hvordan at der flyder øh, en flod af profeti, lovsang og bøn i den nye empowering øh, the mission. Øh, den nye hvad? Den nye testamentlige kirke. Ja. Yeah. Empowering the mission. Og hvordan vi forbereder os til missionen. Ja. Yeah. To understand what God is doing now with us. For at forstå det som Gud han gør med os nu. It's often helpful to go back to the beginnings in scripture så er det tit hjælpsomt at gå tilbage i begyndelsen af skrifterne. So we get some foundations properly laid. Så vi får lagt fundamentet rigtigt. When we often think about prophecy, når vi ofte tænker på profeti, we look at people like Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Nahum and all those other ones. Så ser vi på sådan nogen som Ezekiel og Nehemias. Og så videre. And we think that's kind of the picture of prophesying. Og så tænker vi, det er sådan billedet på det at profetere. Well in a way yes, it's in the Bible. <laughs> ja, det er i Bibelen. But in a way no. Og på den anden side så because they prophesied sådan. in a context. Fordi de profeterede i en kontekst. And it was the context of a covenant. Og det var i en pagt kontekst. And we need to understand og vi har brug for at forstå det her med pagt. And we're going to look at three covenants today. Og vi skal se på tre pakter i dag. I said we lived in Scotland. Jeg har fortalt jer vi boede i Skotland. And now we've moved to England. Vi flyttede til England. They are both part of the United Kingdom as yeah. I know you know. I, de er med i Storbritannien begge to som I nok ved. But interestingly the the legal system in Scotland is different from the legal system in England. Men det er interessant at retssystemet det er anderledes i Skotland end retssystemet i England. There's a lot of similarity. Der er mange ligheder. But there are some important differences. Men der er vigtige forskelle. And you can't mix them. Man kan ikke blande dem. So you need to know which legal system you are operating. Man skal vide inden for hvilket retssystem man arbejder. So covenants are like that. Sådan er det også med pakter. They are legal systems. Man kan kalde det for retssystemer. You can't mix them. Som man ikke kan blande sammen. And that's important. Og det er vigtigt. Because it says in the book of Hebrews. Fordi der står i Hebreerbrevet. God, God spoke through the prophets. Gud talte gennem profeterne. But now he's speaking in his son Jesus. Men nu taler han i hans søn Jesus. Now it's clear in the New Testament that we still have prophets. Det er klart i det nye testamente at profeter stadig eksisterer. But the point is we're showing this with the young people last night. All born again believers are prophetic. Og vi talte også med de unge mennesker i går aftes som det her, men alle eh, kristne, ny, yeah. eh, alle frelste, de er profetiske. And then it's how we grow in that in our maturity. Og det er også noget som vi kan vokse i i modenhed. So we actually don't like talking specifically about prophets. Så vi, not prophets. vi kan ikke så godt lige at tale om om profet eller ikke profet. We talk about prophetic people. Men vi taler om profetiske mennesker. So put your hand up if you are a prophetic person. Så du kan person. løft din hånd hvis du er et profetisk menneske. Okay, put your hand up if you don't think you are. Løft din hånd hvis du ikke tænker du er det. Okay, put your hand up if you're not putting your hand up. Put din hånd op hvis du ikke har, har løftet din hånd. We're all prophetic people. Vi er alle sammen profetiske If mennesker. We've been born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. Hvis du er på ny og, yeah. og, og den forbindelse fylder helgen. Yeah. So new covenant. Så vi er i en ny pagt. And God's doing good things. Og Gud han gør gode ting. 
Okay, we will jump two slides. Så vi hopper to slides frem. Yeah, thank you. Um, now we're going back to the time of Samuel. Så vi tager tilbage til Samuels tid. And you'll know the story of Samuel, how God spoke to him in the uh, the, the tent of Moses as a little boy. Young boy. And God was saying to Eli, who was the high priest, uh, you've despised, you and your sons, you've despised the priesthood. I'm stopping all of that. Og så var det jo, at Gud har talt til Eli øh, og hans sønner om, at I har ligesom vandet templet og Gud. Yeah, not the temple, it was Moses' tent. Oh, yeah, teltet og Gud. Yeah. And a little time after that, the Philistines came and they destroyed Well, they didn't destroy Moses' tent, but they captured the Ark of the Covenant, which was in the tent. Og så var det, at filistrene, de kom og erobrede ligesom det her telt, og så tog de og stjal den her Ark. Eli, the high priest, when he heard the news, he was so shocked, he fell, broke his neck and died. Så Eli, da han hørte det her, så blev han så chokeret, at han faldt og brækkede sin nakke. He understood This was a heavy judgment from God. Han forstod det her, det var en tung straf fra Gud. En And dom fra Gud. The covenant had been broken by Israel. Så den her pagt var blevet brudt af Israel. And Eli's daughter-in-law, she was with child and she went into early labor. Og Elis svigerdatter, hun var gravid og hun fødte før tid. And she died in childbirth. Og hun døde under fødslen. But as the child was coming out, men da barnet var på vej ud, she called the baby Ichabod. Så kaldte hun barnet Ichabod. Which means the glory has been lost. Det betyder at herligheden er mistet. Because the glory of God used would be in the holy of holies in Moses tent. Fordi Guds herlighed det plejede at være i det allerhelligste i Moses telt. But only the high priest could go in once a year. Og det var kun én gang om året at yberste præsten kunne gå ind. But he would see the Shekinah glory over the mercy seat over the Og så ville man kunne se den her Shekinah glory uh, herlighed over. And God arken. went out. Og så Gud han gik ud derfra. Yeah. The glory had been lost. Herligheden blev mistet. But the Bible says where sin abounds God's grace is greater. Bibelen siger at når der er synd, så bliver Guds nåde større. So into that space God raised up Samuel and the start of the prophetic movement. Så i det her mellemrum der kom, så løftede eller rejste Gud Samuel op og yeah. det blev starten på den her profetiske tjeneste. Can we get the next slide? Thank you. I would like to suggest this. Jeg vil gerne foreslå dette. And I believe there's truth in it. Og jeg tror der er sandhed i det. That the glory which was in the holy of holies. Det er den herlighed som var i det allerhelligste. God moved his glory onto Samuel and the prophets. Den flyttede den her herlighed og herlighed over til Samuel og profeterne. And God started to reveal himself in a greater way. Through the prophets. Fordi så begyndte Gud netop at åbenbare sig selv på en større måde eller på en, this is en dybere måde end før. This, yeah, this is marvelous and wonderful. Og det er fantastisk. Ja, yeah. but there was no ark anymore in the holy of holies. Fordi der var ikke nogen ark længere i det allerhelligste. In Moses' tent. I Moses' telt. Ja, yeah. when the high priest would go in with the blood once a year. Når yberste præsten ville komme ind en gang om året med blodet. Empty. Tomt. What do I do? Hvad er det, jeg har gang i? Because he was supposed to put the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat. Fordi det var meningen, han skulle tage det her offerblod og sætte ovenpå. And he couldn't do that anymore. Det kunne han ikke gøre længere. The ark was at a place called Kiriath Jerim. Øh, arken var flyttet til et område, som hedder Kiriath Jerim. And 
So all he could do was maybe put it on the floor and come out, and he would say, I don't know if that worked. Og så det han gjorde, var måske jeg sætte, han satte det på jorden og gik ud og sagde, jeg ved ikke om det virkede. Yeah, there was no glory. Der var ikke nogen herlighed. The, glo- the Shekinah glory was God's face shining. Shekinah herligheden, det var Guds ansigt som skinner. And normally he was, if the glory shone, the sacrifice had been accepted and he would proclaim. Normalt så hvis det var, at der kom den her herlighedslys, så var det accepteret offeret og så vil man proklamere The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine on you Gud velsigne dig og bevare dig eller hans ansigt lyse over dig and give you peace just making it shorter Giv dig fred vi laver den lige kortere yeah, You know the passage Vi kender uh, afsnittet And he would say that with faith and power Og så vil han sige det her med tro og med kraft But now He couldn't say it with faith and power. Nu kan han ikke komme ud og sige det med tro og kraft. So what was happening? Så hvad var det der skete? But it said about Samuel not one of his words would fall to the ground. Men der blev også sagt om Samuel at, at intet eller ingen af hans ord vil falde til jorden. God was making himself available to Israel in a greater way. Fordi Gud han gjorde sig selv tilgængelig til Israel the glory i, i en større måde. Moved to the prophets. Fordi herligheden blev flyttet over på profeterne. And the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance. Fordi Bibelen siger at Guds gave er uden øh, omve- eller We get the next uden, slide. uden fortrydelse. So when you read through the Bible it's, you find that Samuel he had groups of prophets. Når man læser Bibelen, så kan man finde ud af, at Samuel havde nogle grupper af profeter. And that you read about people like Gad and Nathan and Asaph. Man kan læse om Gad og Nathan og Asaph. Ja, yeah. these would have been trained by Samuel. De ville være blevet trænet af Samuel. So prophetic people need training. Profetiske mennesker har behov for træning. You know, if if you feel the Lord's leading you to be a surgeon. Hvis du føler at Gud skal lede dig til at blive sergeant, sergeant. Okay. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you don't start practicing the next day. Så er det ikke sådan at dagen efter så stopper man med at øve sig. There's a process. Der er en proces. And when you have all your qualifications. Når du har fået alle dine kvalifikationer. Then you can work in the hospital. Så kan du få lov at arbejde på et hospital. So yes, we can start prophesying immediately, but there's growing and training. It's very important. It's what so we're doing today. Så vi kan godt starte med at profetere og med det samme, men der er også en læring og en vækst, og det er det vi skal have i dag. Yeah. When we read about Samuel and his, his schools of the prophets. Når vi læser om Samuels profetiske skoler. There's a lot there was a lot of power there was a lot of anointing. Så var der en masse kraft og en masse salvelse. When people would go into that environment they would fall before the Lord. Når folk de kom ind i det her miljø så ville de falde ned for Herren. And they would be prophesying themselves. Og så ville de begynde at profetere. The glory was in the prophets. Fordi Guds herlighed var i profeterne. Yeah. And they would it was there was clearly there was a lot of praise and worship and music. Men det var tydeligt, der var masser af lovsang og pris og musik. And yeah, I'll be speaking a little about that. Angela will be speaking more about that. Det vil jeg fortælle noget om, og Angela, hun vil også. Yeah, it was there was rejoicing. Der var en glæde. And there was intercession. Der var forbøn. And there were declarations. Der var deklarationer. God's kingdom is coming. Guds rige kommer. Yeah. So let's move on. Next slide. Det næste slide. Thank you. Tak. You know the story of David. Kender Davids historie. And there came a point where Saul got King Saul got jealous of David and uh, he started chasing David. Der kom et tidspunkt hvor kong Saul blev jaloux og begyndte at jagte David. Ja. Yeah. And David, the first thing he does is go to Samuel. 
Det første som David han gør, det er at han går til Samuel. And I'm sure he was asking Samuel, you prophesied I was going to be king. <laughs> jeg er sikker på at han spurgte Samuel, du har profeteret at jeg skulle blive konge. And I might be dead tomorrow. <laughs> Og jeg er måske død i morgen. But we know the word of the Lord is true. Men vi ved at Herrens ord er sandt. But it seems to me clear that David spent some time with Samuel. Men det er tydeligt for mig at Gud, øh, at David havde brugt tid med Samuel. At that time, maybe two or three months. Måske øh, to, tre måneder. I'm sure that David would have visited Samuel and the companies of the prophets Jeg er before sikker, that. Jeg er sikker på at David også før det her det skete havde besøgt øh, Samuel og profeterne. And he would see the the anointing and he would see the prophesying. Og han vil Ligesom været med til at se den her salvelse. Han vil have set he de her profetier. He would see the glory. Han vil have set herligheden. But the Holy Spirit had come on him too. Men Helligånden var også kommet over ham. So he was joining in. Så han var med på den. So he learned to dance in Samuel's school of the prophets. Så han var med til at danse i Samuels uh, profetiske skole. And he became a prophetic psalmist. Og han blev en profetisk salmist. And he got to know the young prophets. Og han kom til at lære de unge profeter at kende. Yeah, and what did they prophesy to David? I'm sure he had many prophecies. Og hvilke profetier er der i dag? Jeg er sikker på. Again. Yeah. Again. Der er mange løfter. Yeah. I think some of these prophecies are in the Psalms. Der er mange af de her løfter, som er i salmerne. We may see one or two. Vi vil måske kunne se en eller to. Excuse me. They prophesied about the kingdom which was coming. De profeterede om riget der var på vej. Can we get the next slide? Kan vi få den næste? Okay. Here's a question. Her er et spørgsmål. So I'm quoting there from Psalm 63. Så det er salme øh, 63. And he says, "Oh God, You are my God. I, I seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. Yeah. Der står, Gud, du er min Gud, jeg opsøger dig. Min sjæl tørster efter fællesskab med dig. Ja. Yeah. We were sharing this with the young people last night. It starts with hunger for the Lord. Vi snakker med de unge om det i går. Det starter med den her sult. Are you hungry to know Jesus more? Efter at lære Jesus mere at kende. That's what it's all about. Det er det, som det handler om. And then he says, "I have seen you in the sanctuary, your power and your glory." Der står der, jeg har oplevet din nærhed i helligdommen. Jeg har set din magt og herlighed. So you tell me what did David see and where did he see it? Så so du kan fortælle mig hvad så David og hvor så David det? Any suggestions? Er der nogen der har svaret på spørgsmålet? Everybody's quiet. Alle de er stille. What did David see? Hvad så David? And where did he see it? Og hvor så han det hen? Okay. That's very true. Det er rigtigt. But he's talking about a sanctuary. Der står noget omkring helligdommen. He said I've seen you in a sanctuary. Jeg har set dig i helligdommen. I saw your power and I saw your glory. Jeg har set din magt og din herlighed. What did he see and where did he see it? Hvad så han og 
According to that verse. Så han det. Og vi taler nu omkring lige det specifikke specifikke bibelvers. That's true. He he was in the wilderness, and the story it was the time he was running away from his son Absalom, and he's looking back, and he said, "I want to go back to that place where I saw you in the sanctuary, your power and your glory." So, what did he see, and where did he see it? Hvad er det han har set, og hvor har han set det? Der tales om det her med helligdom og Magt og herlighed. Power and glory. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. In in the wilderness. Possibly, I think he's referring to a specific place, specific sanctuary, like a like Moses' tent. But was it Moses' tent? Yeah. Which temple? Oh, the t- which tent? You mean Moses' tent? Okay, but the ark had gone. He's not allowed in there. Okay, so that uh, bliver svaret her. Der bliver svaret her, at det måske er Moses telt. We we do know that. I don't think he went into Moses holy of holies, but we will see in a minute. Tolkien. Potentially yes, we're saying the glory was on the prophets. Yeah. Well, let's let's move on and we'll find out. Vi prøver at fortsætte, og så prøver vi at finde ud af det. So we get the next slide. Så so vi kan få den næste slide. So David slide. David prayed a prayer. David han bad en bøn. This is Psalm 27. Salme 27. One thing I've asked of the Lord that I shall seek. Jeg har bedt Herren om én ting, og det er mit højeste ønske. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. At få lov at leve i hans nærhed livet igennem. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. At se hans herlighed og meditere i hans helligdom. Uh, we'll just re- jump on a bit. It says, in the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. Um, så so står der, Herren beskytter mig, han skjuler mig i sit telt. And then he says, I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing praises. To the Lord. Der står der lidt efter, der vil jeg bringe ofre til Herren og lovprise ham med hele mit hjerte. Så so David was looking at Eli and going into the holy of holies. Så so David har set uh, Eli gå ind i det allerhelligste. Ja, yeah, he was of the tribe of Judah. He couldn't go in. Han var Judas stamme. Han kunne ikke selv gå ind. But he was hungry for God. Men han havde sult efter Gud. And he Gud. prayed a, a, a daring prayer. Og han bad en meget modig bøn. Lord, I want to go into the holy of holies and see your glory. Han sagde eller bad Gud, jeg vil gerne ind i det allerhelligste og se din herlighed. Has anybody prayed a daring prayer like wanting to see the Lord? Er der nogen af jer der nogensinde har bedt en modig bøn om at kunne se Gud? It's good to do. Det er en god ting. If we start praying daring prayers, hvis vi stopper med at bede de modige bønder, All the angels start saying, "Father, listen to Margaret." Ah, hvis vi starter, ah, hvis vi starter med at bede de modige oh, bønder, whoever. så er det at englene And de siger goes, til Gud I like Fader, "Hvad like er det? Margaret, hun beder sådan der, og så uh, siger han, "Ah, det kan jeg godt lide." So God did something marvelous for David. Så so Gud han gjorde noget storslået for and, David. And he's done something even more marvelous 
for os. Og han har gjort noget endnu bedre og mere storslået for os. Okay, can we get the next slide? Så hvis vi kan få den næste slide. <laughs> um, you know, theologians talk about what we call types and symbols. Når vi taler om rent typer og symboler. Yeah. I think the life of David or David is stronger than that. Så tror jeg at Davids liv er stærkere end det når We're vi taler om prototyper. I'm, I'm an engineer we in engineering we talk about prototypes. Jeg er ingeniør og inden for ja ingeniørverdenen der taler man om prototyper. Which is kind of an early model of something you're planning to make. Det er ligesom sådan en tidlig model af noget man sådan vil gerne skabe. Uh, there, there are some interesting pictures of prototypes. Så I kan se nogle interessante billeder af prototyper. I'm going to get the uh, robot elephant when it comes out. Why, which? The robot elephant. Jeg skal have den der robot elefant når den er klar på markedet. Okay, can we jump two slides? Hvis vi hopper to slides. Are you happy to stay till tomorrow? <laughs> er I glad for at blive her helt til morgen? <laughs> yeah. We'll see where we can get to. Okay. Vi ser hvor langt vi når. David eventually became king over all of Israel. Senere hen så blev David konge over hele Israel. But he had a, a problem to settle. Men han havde svært ved at slå sig ned. What would do we do with the ark? Han havde Uh, og han havde et problem, han skulle ordne. Hvad gør vi med arken? The ark we said was in this place called Kiriath Jerim on its own. Den var op på det her sted, som han lige har nævnt ordet. And Moses' tent was in another place called Gibeon. Og Moses' telt var et andet sted, som hedder Gibeon. And he knew that we could say the glory had been lost from that tent. Han vidste, at Guds herlighed var blevet mistet fra det telt. But what do I do? Og hvad gør jeg så? What do I do? Hvad skal jeg gøre? So we get the next slide. Så vi tager den næste. Okay, so that's just kind of a little map, so you can see where Jerusalem is. Så I kan se det her lille kort, hvor der er Jerusalem ligger. Yeah, you can see Kiriath Jerim just to the left. Og I kan se til venstre er der. Which one? Yeah, and Gibeon a little bit higher, like northwest. Yeah, Gibeon a little higher, northwest. Yeah. Okay. Then an important psalm is Psalm 132. Psalm 132 er vigtig. Just to mention. Den er vigtig at nævne. I, I go into all of this very fully in a book I've written called The King of Righteousness and His Tent. Jeg har studeret det her, og vi har den dybdegående eh, yeah. ting i den her bog, den hedder Kongens Retfærdighed og so Hans Tent. We've only got one or two with us, but we, if you want one, you can put your name down and we can get one sent. Vi har et par stykker med, og man kan også få skrevet sit navn ned, hvis man gerne vil have sådan en bog og købe sådan en bog, yeah, hvor man we'll kan gå dybere. Vi kan snakke med Kim om, om prisen. Yeah. For the sake of time, we'll not read the psalm, but I will talk you through it. But I would ask you to look at it afterwards. Så på grund af tiden, så skal vi ikke læse hele salmen, men vi går igennem den, og I må gerne læse den selv bag. It's, it seems to be Solomon praying, remembering David. Man tror, at det er Salomon, som beder og husker på David. And he says, David, he prayed day and night. Og der står, at David, han bad øh, dag og nat. What do I do with the ark? Hvad skal jeg gøre med arken? Where do I put it? Hvor skal jeg sætte den? Where's the place? Hvor er stedet? Now in Deuteronomy, God says, you will find the place. I femte Mosebog så står der, at Gud siger, at du skal nok finde stedet. And then David prays, and God let your priests be clothed. Let the priests be clothed, yeah. Og så er det så, at der bliver bedt Gud, lad dine præster blive iklædt. Not with 
fancy clothes. Ikke med sådan noget smart tøj. But with righteousness. Men i klædt retfærdighed. And then let them sing for joy. Og lad dem synge af glæde. In Moses' tent there was no singing. I Moses telt der var ikke noget sang. And then we find at the end of that psalm there's a prophecy. Og så kan vi se i slutningen af den her salme der er der en profeti. It probably came to David while he was with Samuel. Som sandsynligvis kom til David dengang han var sammen med Samuel. We, we don't know when he, it was given to him. Vi ved ikke hvornår han fik den. But It says the Lord has chosen Zion. Men der står Herren har udvalgt Zion. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has desired it. Det er det han har ønsket. This is where I will live forever. Det er her jeg vil bo for evigt. And this is where your kingdom will go forth from. Og det er her udfra dit rige skal vokse. And I will bless you. Og jeg vil velsigne dig. So when David got that revelation, så da David fik den her åbenbaring, maybe it was, you know, later he, on in his reign when he was king in uh, Hebron. Måske var det længere i hans kongedømme, yeah. hvor han var i Hebron. He, uh, he says, I know now, the place is Jerusalem. Så det, han siger, jeg ved at stedet det er Jerusalem. That's where we're going to take the ark. Det er der vi skal sætte arken hen. Can we get the next slide? Kan jeg bede om den næste? Okay. Uh, next slide. Thank you. The problem was Jerusalem was still occupied by the Jebusites. Udfordringen var at Jerusalem stadigvæk øh, var befolket eller fyldt af jebuder eller sådan. Yeah. For 500 years Israel had never conquered Jerusalem. Så i 500 år havde de ikke indtaget Jerusalem. Israelitterne. Så so, David said to Joab så David his, sagde til Joab, his army captain, hans herrefører, we're going to take Jerusalem. vi skal indtage Jerusalem. But Joab said, uh, David, there's a problem. Og så sagde Joab, der er et problem, David. The Jebusites are saying, you can't come in here. Jebuderne siger, I må ikke komme ind. And I believe they were claiming divine protection. Og jeg tror, at de proklamerede sådan en guddommelig beskyttelse. And we've got there, it says, the throne of Melchizedek Is the key. Noget well. med at Mel- Melchizedeks yeah. trone er nøglen. Ja. Yeah. who was Melchizedek? Men hvem var Melchizedek? So this is uh, he met Abraham. Der står at han har mødt Abraham. And it said he was priest of the most high God. Og han var Gud den højeste præst. And we read in the book of Hebrews his name means king of righteousness. Og når vi læser Hebreerbrevet så forstår vi at navnet betyder konge af eh, retfærdighed. Yeah. And Bible researchers believe that we could say the office of Melchizedek remain and he was king in Jerusalem. We must mention that he was king in Jerusalem at Ham that her, time. Han var også konge i Jerusalem og så er det at der st- men der står at yeah. hans herredømme. Yeah. yeah. And Bible scholars believe that the office of Melchizedek remained attached to Jerusalem. Så man siger ligesom at hans siger man hans kontor at det ligesom blev forblev forbundet til Jerusalem. And so whoever is king in Jerusalem. Så so, hvem som helst som er konge i Jerusalem is the king of righteousness. Er konge af retfærdighed. Wow. 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 That's a job description. Det er noget af en arbejdsbeskrivelse. It's a job description. Det er noget af en arbejdsbeskrivelse. To bring the righteousness of God over all of the earth. At bringe Guds retfærdighed over hele jorden. What's Jerusalem called? Hvad How does it translate? Jerusalem, hvis vi nu skal oversætte yes. ordet Jerusalem. Yeah. City of peace. 
uh, byen af fred. What does Paul say? Hvad siger Paulus? The kingdom of God. Guds rige. Is righteousness. Er retfærdighed. And peace. Og fred. And joy. Og glæde. In the Holy Spirit. Gennem Helligånden. So God's opened all that up to us. Så so Gud har åbnet den dør for os. So David, we read, he took the city. Så so vi kan læse om at David han tog byen. And he, I don't know if there was a crown, but let's say he there was a crown and he put it on his head. Så so hvis der var en sådan en kongekrone, det ved vi ikke, men så havde han sat den på sit hoved. And he stepped into an office. Så so gik han ind på et kontor. He stepped into the office. Ah, the office. Ja, yeah, okay, flot. Så gik han ind i den her embed. Of the king of righteousness. Øh, embedet er at være retfærdighedskonge. But he was also a priest. Men han var også en præst. And we read this in Psalm 110. Og det kan vi læse om i Salme 110. So it does apply very much to Jesus. Så det passer meget godt til Jesus. But I believe this was a prophecy first given to David. Men det var en profeti som først blev givet til David. It talks about him reigning in Jerusalem. Der står omkring at han regerer i Jerusalem. And it also says you the Lord has sworn. Der står også at Herren har sværet. You will be a priest. Du vil være præst. After the order of Melchizedek. Efter Mel- Melchizedeks Orden. Yeah. David, you will be a king priest, not of Eli's order, not of uh, uh, Aaron's order, but of Melchizedek's order. At han skulle være konge eller præst ikke efter Aarons orden, men efter Melchizedek's orden. Yeah. Who is the descendant of David? Hvem er Davids efterkommer? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the physical descendant of David. Uh, Jesus han er fysisk efterkommer efter David. He inherits han David's har. office. Arvet Jesu embed. And because Jesus also being the eternal son of God. Og fordi Jesus også er Guds evige søn. He becomes the king of righteousness forever så bliver han også eh, retfærdighedskonge for evigt. And the great high priest. Og den store, største, ypperste præst. And the book of Hebrews tells us a lot about that. Hebreerbrevet taler rigtig meget om netop det. Later kings didn't continue in the office. Så var det at senere konger, de fortsatte ikke i det embed. But Jesus stepped right into it. Men Jesus han går direkte ind i det. Because he is the righteous one. Fordi han er den retfærdige. He died for us. Han døde for os. As the sacrifice. Som offer. And rose to the right hand of the Father. Og han stod for de døde og rejst øh, og kom op til Guds højre hånd. Where he continues as the priest and the king. Of righteousness. Hvor han fortsætter med at være eh, præsten og kongen af retfærdighed. And he has the job og hans arbejde det er of establishing the rule of righteousness over all the earth. Det er at skabe en at, at retfærdighed regerer over hele jorden. Is, is he doing that? Er det det han gør? Is he doing it? Gør han det? Is he doing it today? Gør han det i dag? Absolutely. Selvfølgelig. Are we part of it? Og vi er en del Absolutely. Af Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's skip two or three slides. Hvis vi hopper et par slides frem. Next one. Next Næste. one. Okay. Um, next one. Næste. Okay. There we go. Um, So we said David he went into Jerusalem. Så so David han gik ind i Jerusalem. He had prophetic promise. Han fik det her profetiske ord. And you know ord. the story it took two goes but he he brought the ark into Jerusalem. Og han tog arken ind i Jerusalem. There was sacrificing. Og der var offer. But there was also a lot of 
singing and dancing and rejoicing. Men der var også masser af sang og glæde og fryd. And we read David was wearing the priest's garment. Og vi kan læse hvordan at David han havde præste tøjet. And we know he could do that. Præste dragten på. Because he's now the priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Og det vidste vi, ved vi han kunne, fordi han var præst ifølge Melchizedek's orden. Yeah. Ja, Melchizedek's yeah. orden. And he said he put the ark in a tent. Og øhm, han tog og puttede arken i et telt. This wasn't Moses' tent. Det var ikke Moses' telt. We get the next slide. Hvis jeg kan bede om den næste. Okay, so that's Moses' tent on the left. Til venstre kan I se Moses' telt. So, did he put it in what we have on the right? Puttede han i det, det i det vi har til højre? No. Why not? Hvorfor ikke? Wasn't built. <laughs> det var ikke bygget endnu. No, David put it in a tent. Han satte det i et telt. Let's get the next slide. Vi tager lige den næste. Yeah, maybe he went to the the Boy Scouts. Do you have the Boy Scouts and got one I, of their tents? Har I sådan nogle drenge, uh, spider? Måske gik han hen til en af dem og fik et tent. Yeah. Or maybe, let's get the next one. Eller næste. Or from the outdoor shop. Måske i uh, fritidsbutikken. Next one. Or something a little bit more complex. Måske købte han noget mere komplekst. Next one. Or yeah, maybe something, you know, a bit more stylish. Måske var det lidt mere stilfuldt. Next one. Maybe there was... <laughs> he had a transport theme. Måske havde han sådan en transport tema. Next one. Telt. Okay. Maybe he had the Jonas whale fish. Måske havde han været sådan noget Jonas og valen tema. Yeah, tent or... You know the the ship he jumped he was thrown off as a tent. Det der med at uh, han blev smidt yeah. ud af skibet, det er også lidt tent. Okay. Hands up for any of those? Er der nogen der vi stemmer for han valgte? Okay, next one. I think it was something like that. Det har nok cirka set sådan her ud. Yeah. It wasn't a very fancy tent like Moses tent. Det var ikke så fancy et telt som Moses. It was just a simple tent. Det var et simpelt telt. And what do we see in there? Hvad kan vi se derinde? What can you see? Hvad kan vi se inde i teltet? The glory. Herligheden. David couldn't go into Moses' tent. David kunne ikke gå ind i Moses' telt. But he could go into this tent. Men han kunne godt gå ind i det her telt. And he saw the glory. Og han så herligheden. He saw the glory. Han så herligheden. But we said that also the glory went on to the prophets. Men vi har jo lige sagt at herligheden den kom over profeterne. Just if you've got your Bibles, go to Second Chronicles. Så hvis du har din Bibel, så gå til anden kronikebog. Twenty-nine. Niogtyve. Vers femogtyve. I know we've taught this in past in different places in Denmark. Vi har før undervist om det her i forskellige steder i Danmark. But I do believe it will be new to a good number of you. Men jeg tror der er mange af jer som vil opleve det her som nyt. But like I say this this is foundational to what we now move in as God's people. Ja, som jeg sagt så det her det er fundamentalt for at forstå det som vi kan bevæge os i nu som Guds folk. It's actually foundational to the whole of the New Testament. Det er fundamentalt for hele det nye testamente. Yeah. Det nye testamente. Ja, anden kronike 29 vers 25. Ja, yeah, 29:25. Anden kronike 29 vers 25. So this is when King Hezekiah is sort of getting the temple worship. Solomon's temple back in order. Det er der hvor han får templets orden tilbage. Yeah, can you just read uh, 25 and 26? Jeg kommer til at læse vers 25 og vers 26. Kongen opstillede levitterne i templet for at de skulle spille på deres harper, lyre og bækner efter Davids forskrifter og som Herren havde befalet gennem profeterne Gad og Nathan. 26. Levitterne stod så med de instrumenter, David havde indført, mens præsterne blæste i trompeterne. Så so 
the singing prophets who were with Samuel. Så den her syngende profet som var sammen med Samuel, så David who was a prophet. Så David som var profet. Gad and Nathan who were prophets. Gad og Nathan der var profeter. They said. De sagde. Together they knew God was saying to them. De vidste at Gud sagde til dem. This glory which is on the prophets. Den her herlighed som er over profeterne. It needs to be reconnected with the ark. Den er nødt til at blive genkonnektet med arken. But this is in a new way. Men på en ny måde. So we will have the worship 24 hours every day all the time round the ark. Så der var lovsang 24/7 hele tiden rundt om arken. So if you went to Jerusalem in David's day, så so under Davids tid, så so hvis du tog til Jerusalem, it would still be quite a simple city. Så so ville det stadigvæk være en meget simpel by. And you see an ordinary tent. Det ville være sådan meget almindelig telt. Could be the the curtain was open. Det kunne godt være at forhænget var åbent. Yeah, wow. Så kan I can se, see the glory. Wow, jeg kan se Guds herlighed. But you'd hear the singing. Men man ville altid kunne høre sangen. But it was prophetic singing. Men det var profetisk sang. It was the prophets. Det var profeterne. The worship we move in in the church. Den lovsang vi bevæger os i kirken. It started with the prophets. Den startede med profeterne. Asaph, Heman and Jeduthun, Jeduthun were called prophets. De her to navne, de blev kaldt profeter. Worship and prayer are prophetic activities. Så når man beder og man tilbeder, så laver man en profetisk aktivitet. They sit in the prophetic ministry. Så de sad i den profetiske tjeneste. Worship leaders and prayer leaders really should be prophets or mature prophetic people. Så hvis man har en bønneleder i kirken og en lovsangsleder, så skal de være eh profetiske. Knowing how to step into the prophetic anointing. Skal have indsigt i hvordan man kan træde ind i profetisk salvelse. And to release the glory of God. Og hvordan man kan forløse Guds it's, herlighed. It's our job to release the glory of God. Så er det vores arbejde at forløse Guds herlighed. So if you'd walked up to Jerusalem. Så hvis nu du gik op til Jerusalem. I can hear the singing. Så vil man kunne se, jeg kan høre sangen. The Lord is faithful. Gud er trofast. The Lord is merciful. Gud er barmhjertig. He is establishing his kingdom. Han bygger hans rige. To the ends of the earth. Til verdens ende. And the prophetic declarations would go forth from that place. Og så ud fra det her sted, så kunne man høre de her profetiske Establishing the purposes of God. Som etablerede Guds formål. Or maybe someone would come and they'd had a difficult day. Det kunne også være, hvis man havde en dårlig dag, man kom forbi. And a prophetic singer, would, not knowing that, would start singing. Og det kan være, den her profetiske sanger vil ikke kende dit udfordring, men han begynder at synge. The Lord will is bigger than your circumstances. Så kunne han synge til dig, Gud er større end dine omstændigheder. Rejoice. Du kan fryde Rejoice. Dig. Du kan fryde Rejoice. Dig. Fryde dig. And he will come in. Og så vil han komme ind. This is this is powerful stuff. Det her det er nogle kraftfulde ting. Now I said at the beginning we're talking about covenants. I starten så talte vi om pakter. You see, there was Moses covenant. Så vi har Moses pagt. But God made a special covenant with David. Men Gud lavede en særlig pagt med David. And in the context of that covenant. Og i den her pagts kontekst. David could do some different things. Så kunne David gøre forskellige ting. In the context of that covenant. Så i konteksten af den her særlige pagt. He was a high priest. Så var han øverste præst. According to the order of Melchizedek. Jævnfør Melchizedeks orden. He wasn't a high priest after the order of Aaron. Han var ikke en høj øverste præst ifølge so Aarons orden. So he couldn't go into Moses tent. Så han kunne ikke gå ind i Moses telt. But he could go into his tent. Men han kunne gå ind i hans eget telt. And the glory was there. Og Guds herlighed var til stede. And the glory was with the prophets. Og Guds herlighed var med profeterne. Mm. 
Can we move on? Next slide. Kan vi gå videre? So eventually Jesus comes. Så på et tidspunkt så kommer Jesus. But now Jesus is the tent. Men nu er det Jesus der er teltet. His physical body. Hans fysiske krop. Is the tent. Ja, er, er teltet. But the glory of God was in him. Men Guds herlighed var i ham. And we know on the mount of transfiguration that glory shone out. Uh, den gang at Jesus var på det her bjerg, så blev han ligesom forvandlet og herligheden den skinnede. But Jesus said if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Og Jesus han sagde, har du set mig, har du set Faderen? Everything Jesus said and did was revealing the glory of God's goodness. Hvad enkelt ting Jesus sagde eller gjorde, åbenbarede Guds herlighed. The glory of God was in was on open show. In Jesus. Så der var en åben scene over Jesus, hvor man kunne se Guds herlighed. Next slide. Næste slide. And that's the tent now. Og det her, det er teltet nu. We are the tent now. Vi er det her telt. We are the tent. Vi er teltet. But Jesus is the son of David. Jesus, han er Davids søn. He inherits David's Covenant. Og han arver Davids, øh, hvad hedder det, pagt. So what David started, Så det som David startede, he continues. det fortsætter han. Now there are church denominations in Scotland, der er nogle kirkedominationer i Skotland, which say they have singing, but they don't have instruments. de vil sige, at de synger, men de har ikke instrumenter. Because they say instruments aren't mentioned in the New Testament. Fordi at de siger at man kan ikke læse om instrumenter i det nye testament. But we don't want to be Old Testament. Og vi vil ikke ligesom være sådan gamle testamentlige. But we're seeing it's a little bit more uh, complex than that. Men vi kan se det er mere komplekst end bare det. There's another covenant. Fordi der er en anden. There's David's covenant. Der er også Davids pagt. It's the covenant of the king of righteousness. Fordi det er en pagt med kongen af retfærdighed. And this this singing, this prophetic singing, it continued all the way through. Og den her profetiske sang, som startede med ham, den for, yeah. øh, fortsat hele vejen igennem. Solomon built this glorious temple. Øh, Salomon han byggede det her fantastiske tempel. But the singing was in there. Og den her sang var der i. The prophets were in there. Profeterne var der i. But that got destroyed. Men det blev ødelagt. The ark got lost. Og arken forsvandt. They built a new temple. De byggede et nyt tempel. But no ark. Men uden ark. Oh wow. No time to talk about that just now. Vi har ikke tid til at tale om det emne lige nu. But Jesus came. Men Jesus kom. With the glory. Med herligheden. Jesus That that singing continued right through. Og den her eh, sang fortsatte hele vejen igennem. The prophets continued right through, maybe low at times, but not totally gone. Og profeterne, de fortsatte. Det kan godt være, at det ikke var så eh, meget. Eh, no. Det kan godt være, det var lidt lavt i til tider, men det fortsatte. At the birth of Jesus is it Anna? She is a prophetess. Den gang hvor Jesus blev født, så var der han Anna. Det var en profet inde. And Simeon was prophesying. Og Simeon profeterede os. Yeah. What Jesus, what David established, Jesus continues. Det som David han etablerede, det fortsatte. Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, died on the cross, rose from the dead. på korset og stod op fra de døde. There was no more need for animal sacrifice. Så var der ikke længere behov for dyre offer. But is there need for worshiping god men er der stadig behov for at tilbe gud absolutely selvfølgelig so what was established by david god and nathan goes through the cross into the new covenant with jesus and goes to a much higher level of glory så so det som blev etableret at at david gad og jeg tror det var nathan det går ligesom igennem korset og fortsætter på den anden side og så hedder det ikke lige the last thing continue through the cross and is this goes to a much higher level yeah, of glory. Ja, så det går gennem korset, og så bliver det på et helt andet niveau, men det fortsætter. Yeah. So we're just about to finish. 
Then we can take coffee. Vi skal til at have kaffepause. Can we skip forward quite a lot of slides? Can we go for B? Diagram. Nogle ting. Okay, click. Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, and us. Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, and us. Yes, click. Click. So that's the old covenant. So det er den gamle pagt. With the Levitical priesthood. Men levite præstes gaver. Animal sacrifices. Hvor man offrede dyr. Yeah, click. And then we've got David's covenant coming in. Så kommer Davids pagt. But it's the Melchizedek priesthood. Det er Melchizedeks And the uh, sacrifice is now a sacrifice of praise. Og nu handler det om lovsangs eller tilbedelsesoffer. A prophetic glory. Som har en profetisk herlighed. Yeah. Next. And we see the dotted line there. Moses' order was, we could say, partly stopped during David's reign. Så Moses' or, uh, uh, orden, den blev delvis uh, stoppet under Davids uh, regering. Yeah. And then when Solomon built the temple, Moses' system started again. Den gang at Salomon uh, byggede templet, så startede Moses' uh, ting igen. Yeah. Uh, but David's system continued also in parallel. Men Davids uh, system, det fortsatte parallelt. Yeah. Okay, next. Then we have Jesus dying on the cross. Next. Og så har vi Jesus der dør på korset. We said Moses order is stopped. Så siger vi at Moses orden stopper. Next. Jesus he's, he is the sacrifice. Jesus han er offeret. And we're now in the new covenant. Og nu er vi i den nye pagt. So next. Next. So we see what David started goes right through into the new covenant. Så vi kan se at det som David startede det fortsatte direkte ind i den nye pagt. So this prophetic glory which started with Samuel. Så den profetiske eh herlighed som startede med Samuel. We have it. Det har vi. Jesus has given it. Jesus har givet det til we os. We have it. Vi har det. We have it. Vi har det. It's in us. Det er i os. David asked, "Can I go in and see your glory?" David han spurgte, "Må jeg komme ind og se din herlighed?" And the father says, "No, I'm going to put my glory in you." Så sagde faderen, "Nej, for jeg putter min herlighed us. i dig. Herlighed It's in er us. i os." And we release it. Og vi forløser det. We release it in prophetic worship and singing. That's vi kind of the starting det. point. Gennem profetisk uh, bøn og tilbedelse, det er ligesom startstedet. So there's much more I could say. Jeg kunne sige mange flere ting. But we need to break for coffee and then Angela will